Blessings to you all. So what are we all here for? I have to talk into this. All right. What are we here for tonight? Or what are we doing this season? Why, are we, why do we have Christmas? Why do we have Christmas? What's the purpose for Christmas? Well, that's what I want to talk about tonight. God is sovereign. Can you hear me? All right. God is sovereign. Do you know what that means? Sovereign. That means he's over and above, rules over everything, even what goes on our calendars, the days that he specializes on our calendars every year. God is over everything. This earth and everything in it belongs to God. Everything. He created everything and he created you. He controls everything that happens in this earth. One of the greatest kings in history was Nebuchadnezzar, uh, emperor actually over the Babylonian empire. He had to learn the lesson the hard way about who God is, the sovereign God. And finally, he came to the place where he said, God's rule is everlasting and his kingdom is eternal. All the people of the earth are nothing compared to him. He has the power to do as he pleases and with those who live on earth and with the angels in heaven. No one can stop him or challenge him saying, what do you mean by doing these things? So he either causes or allows everything to happen for his own good purposes. So what's God's purpose for Christmas on our calendar? Disco to discover that would be to remember his purpose for that first Christmas. The word Christmas means Christ Mass. The Roman Catholic Church coined that term about, uh, well, in, in the 11th century. Uh, and it means uh, a, a, um, a communion service that celebrates the birth of Christ, the Christ Mass. So Christmas is about Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Son of God. So Jesus is God, being the Son of God, equal to his Father. God, through Jesus Christ, entered his own creation by becoming a man. In John chapter 1 and verse 10, we're told that all th although the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him when he came to this world. So Jesus is the God-man, not half man and half God, but all man and all God. And he set aside his divine powers and attributes to be man in this earth. And you wonder, well, what power did he operate by? He operated by the power of the Holy Spirit in his earthly ministry to show that we have uh, the same power, the Holy Spirit, working through us. He became man. Thank you, Lord. Now, why did he come? Things had gotten very dark in this earth. When God first created humans, they walked with God in very close fellowship, a great fellowship of love. Everything in the earth was full of light and life. There were no troubles, no storms, no volcanoes, no tornadoes, no hurricanes, no troubles only peace and joy. Then people decided they didn't need to listen to God. They said, I want to do what I want to do. And God, as he saw the population growing in the earth and the wickedness getting stronger, uh, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, 
Now the Lord observed the extent of the people's wickedness, and he saw that all their thoughts were consistently and totally evil. They forgot that everything was created by God for his good purposes. People didn't do things well when they didn't follow God, which brought darkness and troubles to this earth. People became proud and self-centered and didn't always treat each other as they should. Worst of all, people didn't treat God as they should. Our rebellion keeps us from God's goodness and light in this life, which also makes us unfit for fellowship with him in the new earth. Then, at that time, he will reorder everything as he intended when he first created everything. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth that he has promised, a world where everyone is right with God. Can you imagine that? Not completely, huh? But it's a good thing to think about. Amen. God has a plan. He would make a way for any person who wanted close fellowship with him to receive the light and the life of his love. That brings us back to God's purpose for that first Christmas and every Christmas since. In Luke chapter 2, verses 30 and 32. This was Simeon. Shortly after Jesus was born, his parents took him to the temple to be dedicated unto God. And Simeon had been told by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah, the Savior, sent from God. And when Joseph and Mary brought the baby in, baby Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit had Simeon there and he spotted Jesus. And he said, I have seen the Savior. You have given, that you have given to all people, all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Simeon had seen the Savior Jesus. God came because people are lost in the darkness of sin, separated from God. Jesus is a light to reveal God to the nations. Jesus Christ is our salvation. Every Christmas reminds us that God through Jesus Christ is still shining his light, seeking the lost. And now God has called on those of us who have received the light to pass the light on to those still in darkness, telling others about Jesus is passing on the light. And that's what we're here for tonight. Amen. That's why God put Christmas on our calendar to remind us that he is still seeking the lost. Amen. They're used to me going 40 minutes, but. 